Okay, cool. That one, that one picked up. Hey, everybody! It's episode three hundred and eighty-four of PodQuest. Hey, hey! It's Wednesday, December twenty-second, twenty twenty-one. I am Chris. With me is Druton. Hello. And Walnut. Hi, I'm here. And man, in about a in two episodes, I am going to so have the year wrong for at least a few months. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're we're yeah yeah. You will. I'm I'm gonna be saying it's January something 2021 for it probably the month of January. Please, please don't, please don't. I don't I don't want to relive 2021. It happens. How are you guys doing? Doing all right. Well, you know, not too bad. I just got done work and I didn't eat dinner, so I'm I'm peaking right now, man. I mean, I didn't eat dinner yet either. Yeah, well, you're not me. I usually I'm, thank eat. fucking God. I, I <laughs> no, I I agree with that. Like you should be thankful. Like you should totally. Um, speaking of of not being you, I, I guess let's jump right into things. Uh, Rich, what's on the agenda tonight? Uh, so I have a little quick uh gripe about Pokemon cards that I want to talk to you guys about and see what you think about this. Um, then we're gonna talk a little bit about how Square Enix uh can't sell like their biggest game ever right now. Um, then we all should have watched the night before Christmas from Critical Role. For our Christmas book club, and then we're gonna have a quick spoiler-free discussion of uh, Spider-Man: No Way Home because I don't want to spoil that for anybody until they get a chance to see it. Yeah. Uh, so, Rich, why don't you tell us about your addiction, your look, unhealthy? It's... Uh, look, it's not it's it's not a substance problem, um, but mm-hmm. we're 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 we are here to let you know look. that you you have an addiction, and it's it's, it's not healthy, and we're your friends, and we. we we just want to make sure you're not making bad life choices. Here's the thing. Before you say that, I don't specifically go out to look for Pokemon. When I'm out, if they're there, I do buy them. Like, I don't, like, ever... I need to go buy Pokemon cards. It's... If they're out, if I see them, I'll buy them. Um, and, uh, you, you gotta you gotta blame our buddy Hype Pokey Pete on YouTube. Um, he's the one who still hasn't gotten the fucking Rainbow Pikachu after 2,200 packs of Vivid Volting. And it's his fault that I'm still trying to get that Pikachu before him. So, if he would just get that Rainbow Pikachu, I would not be getting Pokemon. I wouldn't have gotten that booster box. Doran packs and stuff. So, so like, go ahead. I understand that maybe you don't actively go out searching for Pokemon cards yet. But you also said the same about same thing about Funko Pops like six months ago. And now you do actively go out searching for Funko Pops. So I feel like it is only a matter of time before the same becomes true for Pokemon cards. Well, let's, let's go ahead, Drew. Also, it's not necessarily better that you're just like, oh, well, I don't go see- looking for them, but every time I see them, I buy them. <laughs> it's not I mean, necessarily it's, better. It's, it's every time I see what I'm looking for, I buy. Like, if I How? go to Target, if I go to Target and I see that they have, which they haven't had in stock, like booster packs of Vivid Voltage, I'll buy one or two of them anytime I go to Target. Um, or if there is a jumbo card or something that I don't own that I like, I will buy it. But I I don't like I I do make it a fact that when I go to Target to check their cards, but I don't make it a fact that every time I go to Target I buy cards. So it's only I, the cards and sets that I want. I have another question for you. Yep. How much money have you spent in the month of December on Pokemon cards? Hmm, this 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 is an unfair question. D- it's still a question. It's an unfair question. You're under because... oath. You are under oath. How much money have you spent <laughs> in December on Pokemon cards? Two hundred and fifty bucks. I rest my case. <laughs> but like I said, it's an unfair question because that involves what I call vacation, and when I'm allowed to spend extra money, packs unplugged. When I saw something I would never see out in the pot. Out in the uh, open world, which was a booster box of Vivid Voltage. Which I got a decent amount of cards from that that I believe came close to making my money back if I were to sell them. But so that was only $100, right? That was 120 So And then, that, and then there was another box that I bought for 40 And then uh, I was having a really shitty week last week. So when I got paid, uh, I went Christmas shopping and there was a bunch of stuff there that I... That, that it was just retail therapy because I was just in a really shitty week. So, so what you're telling us is you were feeling a little down. You were jonesing, if if, if to, to no. use to, to use some lingo. No, and the, mm-hmm. the, the thing the thing that made you feel better was uh-huh. Pokemon cards. 
No, the thing that made me feel better was buying something for myself, because I didn't just buy Pokemon but, cards for myself. I also bought a blind box or two for My Hero Academia, because I'm still looking With Funko for that. Pops. Literally, you no, spent, no. You spent no, money it's, on your... Wasn't, there wasn't Funko... <laughs> those, those blind boxes aren't Funko Pops. Oh, they're not? No, they're, they're little, like... Remember when we went to the conventions and they had those little boxes of the little figures that you would put together real quick? Oh, okay, like, yeah. Target, yeah, Target has... About. Target has blind boxes of those, and yes, I've probably bought at this point 10 to 12 when there's only 5 characters, but I have gotten multiples of the same character, and I've just given away, because they're only like 6, 7 bucks. They're not crazy expensive. Um, also, wow, that Rainbow Pikachu card value is way lower than I thought it would be. It's like 220 bucks or something like that, right? Nah, it's under 200 now. Really? Unless you go pay and get it graded. Oh, are you checking eBay, or are you just checking TCG? Uh, everything. Um, I mean, T- TCG player has it uh, $162 now. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Like, um, it- I remember, like, the beginning of the year when my brother and all them were into it when Pete was looking, and that card was at, like, $700. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's probably gotten less rare because they started reprinting more. And now they're restocking with booster packs, which they weren't doing Vivid Voltage booster packs at all since I started buying Pokemon cards until recently. And, like, so when I I went to uh, GameStop to just see what they had before Spider-Man No Way Home on Sunday, and they happened to have a bunch. And so I was like, all right, they, they, they have a limit of four, so I bought four. I was like, sure. Um, so I just, before you actually get into the thing you wanted to complain about, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that like we're ma- we're making jokes about Richie being addicted to Pokemon cards, but like addiction is real and it sucks. Yeah, and yeah, no, it's yeah. people people should fi- try and find help and support where they can if they have yeah. like legitimate addictions. Yeah, absolutely. Like like addiction is real. It is it is a is a mental health issue that you've got, and you gotta please seek help. Don't just hide um hide in under the cover under your own covers. Look for other people to. To, to, to let them know that you do have a problem, um, uh, and admitting it is the first step, and blah blah blah, and yeah, it's I I like you said we're we're joking about it. Honestly, I just find it fun to open Pokemon cards anymore now too. But I don't like to buy single packs because that's bo- opening one pack is boring. So opening... you got you got to drop the big box, like like it's gam it's it's gambling at this point. Like well, and, and that's why why like, don't you just go to the casino? You know. <sighs> There's a COVID risk for the casino. There's a COVID um, risk. COVID risk, risk at for Target going to too. a store. Yeah. Yeah, but there's less of a COVID risk going to to Target. I think. I don't think that's true. I feel like casinos, because their entire industry is reliant on that stuff, um, and like the people that work there work on tips in some capacity. Mm-hmm. They want people to be safe and healthy. Um, the like 18 year old at Target does not give a fuck about you. Um, but anyway, so my, my actual gripe about Pokemon cards is, um, they've, I, I don't know when they in, in, incorporated this. I, prior to a few months ago, I didn't start buying Pokemon cards until, or I didn't, I hadn't bought Pokemon cards since I was 10 years old or whatever. Um, younger than that, because it's 25 now, so I was like 8 years old or something like that. Um, but they have these code cards in there that are, uh, colored green, they have a green coloring with some Pokemon cards on them. Some of them have a white coloration. Some of them say Redeem. Some of them say TCG Go. In the new set, Fusion Strike, uh, the, the backing doesn't change, but it actually, it'll say like, uh, Fusion Strike Booster Pack, and it'll either have quotes on it or no quotes. And that tells you whether or not you have a good pack. That card. And I hate that, because part of the fun of opening a pack of Pokemon cards is like, ooh, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? Is it going to be a good pack or not? And if you pull that code card and accidentally look at it or see what's on there before just throwing it off to the side, you're going to see that you have a crap pack right away. And it's just like, it's kind of like that you're spoiling the fun for me by letting me know what I have, which they put the code card in the back of the of, of the cards but I was showing you guys there is the card trick with most of the cards where if you take four from the back and put it on top, the last card you're going to pull is your rare card from that pack. So a lot of people will do that. They'll, they'll put aside the, the code card 
and then pull the four from the back, put it on top, and go through and see that rare card last. So, out of curiosity, have you considered that Pokemon cards are meant for children and not for grown adults that are trying to be surprised by rare cards? I mean, maybe, but it doesn't... So it's still like I've spoken with Pete and he also like disagrees like they, they shouldn't do that. They shouldn't have that tell like there should not be a tell of whether or not there's a good pack. Like I've been I was talking about those blind boxes for My Hero Academia. I've been trying to get I just got Todoroki. So I have four of the five characters. I want the All Might, but he's a one in 25, I believe. Where's the box? Yeah, he's one in 24 to get. And so I, a buddy of mine, every time I buy a box or if he's there when I buy a box or when I give him one of the extras I have, he looks around to see what's different from the other boxes because there has to be a tell. I'm like, there's no tell. That's part of the fun and part of the risk in buying these is you might get duplicates because there's no way of knowing but so, unless you break into the box. So if... Like, when you're buying the pack of cards, you also don't know. You don't know until you open the card. So it's still a blind yeah. buy. You have no way to, to know what's in there until you open it. And, yes, that card yeah, does yeah. give you – it gives you a signal that, like, you're not going to get a really good card. But as you were saying, too, like, just because it's a white card doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting a good card. It just means you're getting yeah. a slightly better card. Yeah. It's but like again, if, you get, if you get the white card, it just means hollow or better. Where the cop, you don't really collect cards. I don't know how much you've paid attention to a Triton, but like cards get like there's hollow, then there's full art, alternate art, V Max, V's, and like it just gets exponentially more and more better. Which I could I could show off to you guys sometimes, but like then there's like rainbow cards and gold cards and stuff like that. That white card will let you know like you got something good. But I just opened two packs in front of you guys, both of them were green cards, and I was able to just show you like. I have a non-hollow nothing. Like, for a collector, I didn't get anything. For a somebody who's playing the trading card game, that might have been a card that they need, but, like, they, they, they got, they got, they might have gotten a card, but it wasn't like, it, it might not be anything special. Because usually the hollows and, and things like that, or like the V-Maxes and the Vs and stuff are the good cards to get. And good, maybe good cards to use as well? I'm not really sure. I don't, I won a kind of battle with how many cards I've gotten since, but I don't even think I can put together a full deck right now. So y'all, like, I, I, we watched you open those packs. I, I just double checked some of High Poke Pete's videos. That card's in the back. You could just open the pack and just go normally, because you know those fir- those back four cards are going to be trash anyway. Just yeah, don't don't even look at the card that's in the back. Just open them and go. Look, like, don't I, do the whole stupid trick. And like, No, yeah, yes, you can do that, but what if you open the bag backwards? What if you you, you pull it open and you see the, the back first? They're, like, sometimes, like, look, I know, I don't have to do the card trick. It, it is what it is, but it's still, if I see that card before I go through the rest of my cards, I know I but have a bad the, pack. the way the packs open, you should never see that card first ever period like the way the the fold is in the pack and how the like the spot that you would tear to separate th- that cards in the back like it, it's a big deal over absolutely nothing i do so rich just to to be on your side for a half second here uh-huh. i completely understand why you and people that are into that like adults that are into like opening pokemon cards find it like just frustrating that that card even exists because it is like a thing where if that card didn't exist there's not even the um the like the the enticement to look at it like you're not even being like teased like oh well i could just look at this and know right away if it's even worth flipping through the rest of these cards it becomes like entirely like oh yeah no i have to at least look at this like fifth card from the back to know if it's a, if i got anything good but like my original argument i feel like still does stand where it is a like pokemon cards are for kids like erica's nephew is eight i want to say and like he's got a bunch of pokemon cards last year we had purchased him like a couple sets of pokemon cards off of like amazon and like he could like he doesn't like he's too young to play the game so like he doesn't really know like that stuff he just thinks the cards are fucking cool, regardless of what's on them. Like, he doesn't know how the game works. He literally just, like, makes up his own games with it. And he's just excited to, like, see what the new Pokemon look mm-hmm. like on the card. So, yeah. like, I think, like, 
in the, in the Pokemon company's mind, like regardless of who actually is super into these, because I feel like in the grand scheme of things, there are more people in our age demographic that are into these cards than like his demographic. Mm-hmm. But like to the Pokemon company, it's it's a child's toy. Like they are they are aimed at children and fuck adults. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the the reason a lot of kids have gotten back into them in the recent year is because Lamo Paul decided to start getting into them throughout the year. And they have this, for some reason, look up to Logan Shithead Paul as somebody to look up to and then started collecting Pokemon cards because he does. And it's like he made them big again. Um, and on maybe if it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't be collecting them because I started collecting them through somebody else who started collecting them because of somebody else who watched him and whatnot. Like, it's, it's just, like, yeah, it maybe, yeah, it's for children, but it's also, they are built as collectible items and collector's cards, and it's the same as, like, uh, sports cards and stuff like that. Like, they're, they're, like, if you open a pack of sports cards, there's gonna be cards that, that, for some reason, I don't understand why, I don't understand why Pokemon cards are worth money, but for some reason, there's gonna be sports cards, sports people that are, are worth well, money. The, the, well, the cost and, is the same as anything. It's it's the number of that particular thing printed, or in some cases, like um, like I remember Drew, like a year or two ago, you had gone through like your old like Gen One Pokemon cards, and like mm-hmm. a certain run of cards had like a shadow on the border that mm-hmm. there yeah. were just less of those made, so those are worth more money than the ones without a shadow, or it's vice versa. The other way I around, forget. but yeah, but like, like you know what I mean, like. It it's all comes down to like they only made one thousand holographic Charizards in that first printing, so like there are only a thousand of those out in the wild, and yeah, there are probably and I I'm just using that as a nice round number, but like you figure, so there were a thousand holographic Charizards. Um, kids suck, so really there's probably like six hundred holographic Charizards. Mm-hmm. Um, so like out of the millions of possible Pokemon cards, those are only, there's only 600 of that one, so it is worth money. Versus, right. like, I have two holographic Egyptian Mews. Everybody has a holographic Egyptian Mew because they were giving them out for free for one of the highest grossing movies of, like, 1999. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I mean, collectibles you, you... in general are are just really stupid. They are. Trust me, they are. I have a Funko Pop that two days ago was worth 75, today is worth 60. Yep. It, yeah, like, exactly. Collectibles like, are all... like stocks and, and cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. Like it, None of it actually has any real value. The value is completely up to the person. Like Your collection of Funko Pops to you is worth whatever value you assign to. Um, That value is maybe just not what another person like would assign to it. So like maybe you have like a random Funko Pop that like you paid $5 for you think it's actually kind of stupid, like, you bought it just because, like, it was five bucks, but, like, somebody else, like, loves that one and would give you 500 bucks for it. And, uh, according to TCG Player, um, Ancient Mew is worth about 35 bucks. Really? Yeah. And I have two of them. You have two of them. Yeah, it's, it's because they're older cards. Yeah, that that one just seems like Like, there were so many of them. I mean, I have, I have the entire collection of the first movie, uh, promo cards, and the Dragonite's worth 11 bucks. It's Wait, not was the Mew? Spe- was the Mew not the first movie? Was that the second a- movie? Ancient Mew was second movie. Mm-hmm. Wow. The, the I... first movie was Dragonite, Mew, Pikachu, and Mewtwo, I believe. Oh, I did no, not. It, 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 there wasn't uh, a Mew. Uh, there are two different Mew pro- promo cards. Yeah. Because I definitely sold off the one Mew promo card I had. I don't know what happened to the Ancient Mews that I had, but. And I have I have like a bunch of uh Mew promo cards um from uh I, one of the other movies that that are worth nothing like I can't find it um on this on this on my TCG player list but yeah it's I mean some of them are worth like some of the even the promo ones are worth money because it's been twenty years and so yeah everyone had them back then but today they might be harder to find. And people might want to complete their collection or complete a set, so they might be willing to pay more. It's like right now, I'm I uh I've been wanting to find some more of. They had um a set out called Celebrations, which was recent to celebrate the 25 years, and that's when I really started to buy them. I bought two uh what they call ETBs, which is a bunch of packs and a bunch of other stuff, and it's in those sleeve boxes that I showed you. That's where those sleeve boxes came from, where the ETBs. 
uh, I have maybe 13 more cards to complete that list. And I'm like, I kind of want to just complete the set and then call it a day. Obviously call it a day with celebrations because I don't need to buy anymore once I complete the set. But some of them are really rare to get. I got one of the rarer cards to get, though, which is nice. Okay. Um, and that's yeah, kind of cool. Yeah. That, that, that's really all that, like, I just, for me, it's just, it is, like, it's part of that, know, knowing what you're gonna get, the potential chance of knowing what you're gonna get, yeah, it's in the back, whatever, but, like, if I see it, if I accidentally see it, I know what I'm gonna get. It, it's just, it, 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 it's like, I don't know, I like the suspense of seeing the rare card last. I like the- going through the cards, seeing what, what's in there. Uh, seeing if there are any art, because I have come across a few regular cards. I'm like, oh, that art's pretty cool, and I like that art. Um, but it's just that the suspense of the rare card is last. What is it like? It's just to me it, that 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 is a more entertaining or more exciting way to open Pokemon cards than just flip through. Let's see, they're packs of ten, and it's fifth from the back. So flip through the top five, and oh, there's my rare. Yeah, I. Like, I do, un- like, I understand why, like, it would be slightly frustrating, but, like, Drew, but, like, Drew said, like, you can easily not look at that card and not go, like, you could take that card, put it to the side, and then shuffle the, 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 what is it, ten cards, and have a surprise every time. Mm-hmm. Might not be a good surprise, like, it might be a disappointing surprise, but still be surprised with every, every one. Yeah. It's like, when I, um, when I bought the booster box, I was opening them with my buddy Paul, and and Pete on, and uh, at at one point, I would open the card and go to do the card trick and flip. I'm like, oh, it's a green code card. Let's just get to the end, because I had 36 cards, 36 packs to open, and so it was just like, all right, let's get through that one. Like, when you have that many cards, but, like, when you only have, like, two, three, or eight packs to open, it's kind of like, I don't want to know what I'm going to get. I want to go through it and see what I get. Which, like, like I said, I do understand it, but... yeah. I also don't feel bad for it. I feel like it's com- like being on social media constantly and then complaining when you see spoilers, but you're the one that was on social media in the time when you couldn't see a thing. It's like, well, you're, you've made, you've brought your own demise. <laughs> it's see, like, I, I disagree with that because I didn't see Spider-Man until Sunday morning and I was on social media constantly Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and I did not get spoiled. Which I mean, but but then there's also an episode of The Flash. Their social media spoiled a part of an episode the day after it aired. When I, I like, I didn't have a chance to watch it, and it wasn't like a major spoiler, but it was like the theme of the ep- the major theme of the episode that you were supposed to go into it not knowing. I found out the second I jumped, the uh, second I like clicked Facebook, like. You're, you're allowed to get mad at social media if you get spoiled because it, it, if you're smart like I am, you're not following a lot of those pages that you know will spoil it. It's some schmo who decided to spoil it. Like, there, I've, I'm in a Coheed and Cambria group and they have flat out kicked people out because they have spoiled Endgame, Spider-Man, and things like that. And it's like, that is not, we're, we're here to be friends. Don't do shit like that. I, yeah, I mean, like, I, just sorry, my guys, point no. is, it's of it's an avoidable thing. Like, you don't have to go look for that. You don't have to be on social media. Like, you don't have to flip it around and look at see what that last card is and know whether it's a good or bad pack. Is all I'm saying. I mean, I, I don't have to, but if I open the cards and the that card is last, and I go to throw it off to the side, I can see what it is. But he's got like, an obsession, Drew. I don't think you understand this part. He's he, addicted. Clearly. He he has he has to rationalize it. So this is his rationalization. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, Rich? No. <laughs> um. But that that's I don't know. Anybody who listens, if you open Pokemon cards, if if you're a collector or anything like that, comment on Facebook. Let us know what you, how how you feel about this. Maybe I'll remember to post something about it on Instagram uh, in the next couple of days or before next episode. How do you feel about these code cards and these potential, like, not spoilers, but, like, I don't really know the best way to... These tells of what you're going to get. Like, is this a problem to you or not? Uh, like, let us know. Chat with us, because we we do like getting uh, interactions with you. Yeah. Um, so, 
Have you guys seen what's going on with Final Fantasy fourteen? Well, I tried it's to log on to my popular. <laughs> I I tried to log on to my account two days ago, and it still won't let me on. Um, That's I'm accurate. Not, I'm not serious about that. I haven't tried to log on or anything. Um, but yeah, uh, they because they cannot update their uh, servers, they can't hold more enough any more people in the game. So they have to stop sales of their new. Uh, um, Expansion pass. So expansion not just the pass. expansion. They have halted sales on the on the entire game. Yeah. Um. They have blocked trials. Uh. Free players or like player like I I don't know exactly how that works, but like I think they have like a free like you can play till such a level. Mm-hmm. Um. They are only allowed to play late night and early morning, like when server loads are already incredibly low. Yeah. Um. And there's a bunch of other stuff kind of in there to try and like alleviate some of this because basically like. That game is so popular and hardware is so hard to get because of shortages that Square Enix has no way to accommodate the player load that wants to play their game. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking wild. Um, just holy shit. <laughs> yeah, like I've I've heard stories of people logging in at two, uh, just to get in queue, and they won't get to play until six or seven o'clock at night. Yeah, like I list one podcast I listened to. One of the people on there plays Final Fantasy fourteen, and I think in the last two podcasts she has basically said um, she was logged in to the game waiting in queue while they were recording the show because like it they they were not going to get logged in in the like the two hours that it took to record. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and yeah, and it's 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 just crazy that like chip shortages and hardware shortages and stuff like that are having that big of an impact. Like. You don't normally see games that a that game has been out for almost a decade now, like in in its um reborn form, like not including yeah. the disaster that it was when it launched. Um, yeah. but it's been out for almost a decade, and it is still popular enough that like they need to grow their server farms, and they can't. And because of the way that like these games work, it's not like they can they can't even just spin up new servers because they have to actually be able to add resources to the existing ones or add like um load balancing to the existing ones because like i like eric has been talking about this being a problem for for a while now and Mm -hmm. it kind of it basically comes down to like eric is on a server with people that he knows um the community of the server is kind of what makes the game worth playing if you migrate your character to another server you're not going to be with your friends you're not going to be in the same like community like that game might not be fun for you anymore. Yeah, and I I had that um when I went back and played it when I went back because I think I always had it uh, subscribed to it. But like every time I would go back, are you still subscribed? Um, to- I'm sorry, I just no no no. I don't. I'm not still subscribed. But like when I say when it went back is like when I would start playing again because I was for the time that I was subscribed, I never unsubscribed. Um, and it wasn't until I unsubscribed that I decided I'm just not going to play it anymore. Like. Instead of, like, I'll unsub until the next DLC comes out. No, it's, I unsubbed, I'm done. Whereas if I were still subscribed, I'd probably still be playing, I think. I, who knows. Um, but when I, uh, I stopped for, like, a full year from playing it. And then when I went back, uh, the guy I went back with who wanted to play, he was like, well, let's, let's, let's play on this server, that server. I'm like, no, I dude, I'm playing to join somebody that I know who lives far away. I see you every day at work. I'm playing on this server. It's the only server I want to play on. And even when he was kicked out of the guild, because he sucks, um, he wanted to move to a new server. It's like, no, I'm staying on this server. I play this game to play with this person. You're just an added extra. Like, that's it. If I change servers, I'm not playing the game anymore. Which, like, that is totally... Like that that is what like MMOs are for. Like mm. you're generally not playing them to play by yourself. You're playing them yeah. to play with either your friends or people you met in the game or what have you. And even if you're playing by yourself, like I do a lot solo when I when I was playing 11, I was still in the link shells and the guild of the people that I wanted to play with. So I'll talk with them and try to plan stuff for like doing our daily daily shit. Like even if I'm soloing and just leveling up and and another class, I'm still playing with them by being able to chat with them and, and, and hang out with them. If I need to quote. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing I forgot to mention too, 
Um, Square Enix has also pulled all of their advertising for Final Fantasy XIV. So commercials, like online ads and everything, um, which is a smart thing to do. Like you don't advertise a thing that you can't sell. But like mm-hmm. that's how that's in how bad of shape it's in that they don't know like they are so uncertain about when they will be able to fix the servers that like yeah. they'd rather just pull everything and kind of deal with that. And it's definitely a it's it's like rocking a hard place because they can't like refund people necessarily or like give everybody just free time because they need the reoccurring money to make the game worth it to keep working on and like heart like hardware costs have gone up so like they also need that money to be able to dump into having to buy servers when servers are available but like people that are paying for it can't play it Mm -hmm. like it just it sucks all the way around it it does i i like i feel bad for the people who who are actively playing and unable to play like i'm glad i stopped i and and some of these um dlcs or not dlcs expansions have like been interesting to where like I thought about maybe trying to go back and going into it and stuff, but I'm just like, now hearing about this, I'm just like, I'm glad I didn't. I am very glad I didn't go back. Yeah, it's just, it's a shame because, for, like you said, from from everything I have heard from pe- like play, like places that people are still playing it, it's fun. They've done a great job keeping everything going. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it seems like every expansion, they, they actually legitimately have made the game better versus like a yeah. WoW where like one, one expansion makes every, like, WoW is very much a one step forward, one and a half steps back between yeah. expansions. And Final Fantasy just seems to, like, they're super passionate about it. So, like, every expansion, they ju- they try to make it better. And, you know, when they first launched A Realm Reborn, I remember not being able to sign it. I remember, like, those crazy cues and, like, sitting at work with Eric, actually, and us mm-hmm. both just sitting there, like, trying to log in all day. And then just yeah. staying logged in until we got home because... We knew, like, we wouldn't be able to get in any other way. Um, and, like, that's kind of expected when a game launches or, in that, in their case, relaunches because they don't have the infrastructure to, to support, like, a huge launch if they're not expecting a huge launch. Like, y- you always, they, game developers stuff always kind of err on the side of caution when it comes to, like, capacity and server load. Mm-hmm. But, like, at this point, it's like, oh, yeah, no, this, this game is super popular. It gets more popular with every expansion. We just can't do anything about it. And it gets popular with every expansion, and people stop playing WoW. Yeah. So now what? And and that's the thing. Like this, like you said, WoW was always, uh, like, regardless of what's going on with Activision Blizzard, you, you, you said, like, WoW was always, like, a every expansion is one step forward, one step back type of thing. And I remember even hearing that, like, you're, you're, le- you're, level max like fluctuated so much per expansion and just like at one point it just seemed senseless to even try to play yeah like the Um, the level the level for wow went up to i think like 130 and then the most recent expansion dropped it back down to 60 yeah uh whereas like final fantasy uh 14 i believe level has increased 10 levels every expansion um but they've like they've uh with the expansion two expansions ago actually like the expansion that was coming out just before I stopped, they reworked the entire like um uh party system and and reworked a lot of the classes and how you build the classes to where like you're no longer forced to be DPS as a black mage or something like that. Like they made it so that queuing time wasn't ridiculous as DPS and quick for others. It was queuing time was the same for everyone. Yeah, and, I've even and- I've even heard that just like story wise which is not something you often think about mm-hmm. in an mmo um i thought that like the story for a realm reborn was solid enough for an mmo like it mm-hmm. it kept me going through it um and i've i've heard on multiple places that like it's now like a slog to get through that because everything that comes after is so good heaven's word was so good all of the um added stuff that they provided with a realm reborn pre heaven's word was great like I I had a great time playing the story stuff, and I stopped like two, one or two um uh 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 content releases before I can't even remember the name of the DLC or the expansion because I think that's like two d- expansions ago when they incorporated dancer and stuff, and like I was looking forward to it, but I just I 
lost touch with the game. I was playing, I think Monster Hunter had come out. I was playing that a lot more and rather played Monster Hunter than Final Fantasy and just they couldn't justify continuing playing Final Fantasy. Uh, but it just, I, I, I hope that they do what they did with Final Fantasy XI where like, or at least I think they did something with Final Fantasy XI where even though the servers are down, you can still play it solo or something like that. Or I, I think there was eventual plans to do like a, Final Fantasy XI story only version or something like that. I don't really remember. Yeah, that I honestly um, don't know. I hope they try to do something like that with fourteen because fourteen story overall is just fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I remember enjoying fourteen, and like I, I also, honestly like I hope that like sooner rather than later they can figure out like all of this and like get people to be able to play the game again because like it's definitely not Square Enix's fault. Like. They did not fuck up in, in this case. And no, ho- if... <laughs> hopefully that's not how people are, like, pitching it. That, like, this is their fault. They should have been prepared. It's like, no one's prepared for this. Like, I have clients that need new servers and new hardware and stuff like that that we just can't fucking get. Like, yeah. If, t- if you want to, t- if you, if you want to blame anybody for this, blame Activision Blizzard. This is their fault for fucking up so badly. Is it? I mean, I, I would, a, I would blame, a lot I would of... blame the pandemic. I mean, yeah, you can blame the pandemic, definitely, but if you want to blame someone, like, a lot of the WoW streamers went to Final Fantasy and their fan base followed them. I mean, that's, that's fair. Like, yes, like, um, Activision Blizzard is just a fucking garbage pile, so Mm -hmm. absolutely blame them for, for just being a garbage pile, but, um, yeah, I mean, the pandemic is really the biggest problem here. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've had friends lately who've been getting into overwatch and they've been telling me buy it buy it buy it it's on sale for like 14 bucks at the moment i'm like no don't you have overwatch no there was a free weekend once where i played it uh once or twice and i I don't even think i played a full match and then i once went to a buddy's house and played it for a little bit but that that's i've never owned it myself and i've told him like i i'm like they're like buy it buy it i'm like no i'm i'm good I'm good. It's Activision Blizzard. I'm good. Yeah, I mean, look, Overwatch is fun. And, like, I like the people that made that game aren't necessarily the people that are a problem at Blizzard. But I completely understand, like, just kind of a hesitance to, like, support them in any way. Mm-hmm. Uh, that said, though, would you like to talk about The Night Before Christmas? Yeah, so, um, give a little backstory to the listeners. Uh, we, I decided for Christmas, for our book club, we're going to do something Christmas nerdy related. And so you got Critical Role, they do their one shots, and they did in 2019 a one shot called The Night Before Christmas, where Liam O'Brien DM'd, you got to see Matt Mercer as a player for maybe like the second time in the entire existence of Critical Role during that, at that point. Um, and, and you got to just meet like an exciting, a uh, cast of characters, or not exciting, a fun cast of characters in this Christmas, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas inspired D and D session. And so I, I was, I, I, I wanted to see what you guys thought of it because I hadn't watched it since it first aired, and I have now decided that it's going to be a Christmas tradition because it did. After finishing it today, it did kind of get me into the Christmas uh, a little bit more. Yeah, you know what? Like, I thought it was. I thought it was fun, like, like the, everyone was, like, in the Christmas, like, attire, they played, they all played elves, mm-hmm. and they were, like, they were supposed to be, like, Santa's elves, which I guess, like, yeah. D&D-wise, mm-hmm. they were more gnome than yeah, elf. Yeah, they were, they were gnomes, for sure. Um, that's, I mean, that, that Travis's character, Chutney, is basically his new character in yeah, campaign Chutney. three, Chutney, uh, and he's, he's a gnome, like... He's a gnome rogue, which is the same thing that like Chutney yeah. was a was a quote unquote elf rogue. Yeah, um, um, I did think that the it was kind of like just by the books for the most part. Like it, it, it felt like any other episode of it up until like kind of closer to the end during like that final like climactic battle. Let's call it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, which is nothing wrong with that. Like, I think Liam did a did a good job. I lo- like it was kind of endearing that especially early on that like. He kept kind of like pausing and like looking over at Matt, like like <laughs> almost like asking for like permission yeah, or guidance. Like, like, what do you think? He's like, it's your game. It's like, well, you're the master, though. Uh, and it, it, I love, I loved those interactions between them. Yeah, and like there, there were even a few times where like not intentionally, like he was in character, but Matt definitely kind of like fell back into like 
the DM voice, let's call it, Mm -hmm. of, like, describing what was going on um, in a way that, like, a lot of the other players don't do. And, like, not not, not as, like, a negative to them or, like, a negative to, like, um, Liam's DM skills. Like, that was just how Matt was portraying his character. Like, as he was describing, like, what his character was doing, it just felt much more like what a DM would do versus the player. Yeah, and I believe, like, Mercer, he, he, um, they talked about this th- throughout campaign two because, uh, Marisha was playing Bo the monk, and all his monks do are punch. So, like, when it, when it became her turn for the first couple, handful of sessions, like, she would just be like, well, I just go and punch, and I just go and punch, and eventually Matt was like, well, give me flair. So, just keep pushing flair. Tell me how you do it. And I think that's how he plays pretty much any of his classes. But especially like a martial class, like a fighter, he does the flair of how he goes to attack and then lets the dice determine whether or not it, it works. Okay. Yeah, because like I didn't really watch enough of Exandria Unlimited to like see him as a player. Um, so this was mm-hmm. really the longest thing that I've like watched and paid attention to that he was a player in. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about it, Jordan? It was all right. Uh, to be honest, I didn't finish it. <laughs> like I was trying to watch it during work today, but. These last two weeks with work, actually, I guess this last month, I've been on a project and the last few weeks I've been on almost all day training calls. So, like, I have yeah. not had time to watch things. I barely finished it. Um, It's just that it was this time of year. Like, it's not that it wasn't like a I didn't want to watch it. Um, But, like, I knew I had no time today because I had on site this morning and then basically back to back calls all afternoon. Um. Mm-hmm. And, like, yesterday, it's like, all right, I have time. Like, I think I started it on Monday or Tuesday. And, like, it took me until, yeah, so I guess I started it Monday because today's fucking Wednesday. Um, that's how, that's how my week is going. I forgot it was Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I started it on Monday, got through maybe half of it, if that, and then, tr- like, literally spent all day yesterday trying to watch it and just having one thing after the other come up where to the point where, like, I had to watch the end of it twice because i just missed most of it um like i got up to the final battle but i did not like so i will say the final battle was the best part of the episode yeah i mean it, it, it's it it was like the the episode like i wouldn't say the any part was really bad particularly but it, it no. does progressively get better in the final battle with everything that they do and with the with it culminating with like the final full reference to nightmare before christmas and everything that happens and then wait what nightmare travis before christmas? huh what there was something about nightmare before christmas in this well, are you being serious i've never seen a nightmare before christmas okay this is literally entirely the nightmare before well like it's the nightmare before christmas the, Oogie, yeah. the final boss is oogie boogie the character from nightmare before christmas who kidnaps santa claus in the movie I, did, I had no idea that's what happens in that movie. Yeah. No, Nightmare yeah, Before Christmas and, and is fucking great. I the, the, hollowed, the Hollowed King was Jack Skellington. Okay. So I, I didn't get to him being introduced in there, but yeah. He he gets introduced midway through the final fight as okay. a, an ally to the players. So, yep. the, the, right, big, the, so the big thing that kept, like, like the I think... Um, Ashley killed it, and like as she killed it, like a like a a, a poop bug thing falls out of it. That was supposed uh-huh. to be the villain from Night Before Christmas. That was a hundred percent the villain from Night Before Christmas. Oh. Yeah, so I've tried to watch that movie three times and only got about fifteen minutes in each time because I really, really didn't like it. God, it's so good. Yeah, no, I like for whatever reason, nothing about that movie clicks with me. Um, I don't know if it's one of those things where like. Everyone else that I know that likes it saw it when they were much younger. I didn't even, like, attempt to watch it until I was, like, 20. That's possibly fair. Like, like I, Yeah, like, the first time I tried to watch it, I was, like, 19 or 20. And it was one of those times where, like, I was with a bunch of people. It came up that I'd never seen it, so they put it on, and then everybody else left the room. I'm like, well, I'm not going to sit here and watch <laughs> this garbage fucking movie by myself. So I got up after 15 minutes because I was bored anyway and went to where everybody else was. I just sent a gif of Oogie Boogie from Nightmare Before Christmas and he's got bugs coming out of him. Like that was, mm-hmm. the, the, that that's that was the final boss. Like the entire, it was, I'm, I mean, it's well, the night before Christmas. Like, But and, I thought that was a play on the night before Christmas, not the nightmare before Christmas. Well, it's both. I mean, it's and both. Like, 
the the trees, the forest of trees with the holiday shapes on them. That's from yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. D- didn't you and, play Kingdom Hearts too? Yeah, but twenty years ago. But Nightmare Before Christmas was in Kingdom Hearts too. Essentially, that setup of the rotating stage is the f- boss fight with Oogie Boogie in 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 uh in Kingdom Hearts two. I'm gonna be honest. I don't remember that at all from Kingdom Hearts two. Maybe I never finished Kingdom Hearts two. It's possible. It's a Kingdom I, Hearts game. I may have gotten to that stage and just said, never mind, and just noped the fuck out. You would say never mind to that, but you wouldn't say never mind to, like, Atlantis? I doubt that. I like Little Mermaid. That movie's iconic. Yeah, but She Atlanti- wants to be where the people are. Atlantis and Kingdom Hearts 2 was just replaying through, uh, was going through uh, Little Mermaid as a um, rhythm game. I and vaguely was, remember that. It was bad. It was really bad. Um, but... Yeah, I, I honestly, I totally did not know that was supposed to be, like, a Nightmare Before Christmas, like, mm-hmm. thing. That's, and okay. When Liam goes and gets the the map for that final fight, Matt Mercer even turns and says to whoever, oh, it's, it's Oogie Boogie, or whatever. I, I don't know if that was, because that was in character voice, so I don't know if he was legitimately... Like, oh, that's what it is. If he was just figuring it out then, or if he had known the no, entire time. N- no, no, it it came off as him being very excited that they were about to yeah. fight Oogie Boogie. Like, oh yeah, for sure. No, that that was Matt Mercer. It seemed to me that that was Matt Mercer, the person, like just being excited about what a fight against Oogie Boogie is going to be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, and I just go ahead. No, I was gonna say yeah. Like I so again, like I was saying before, like. I barely managed to finish this. I, there were definitely, like, bits and pieces, like, like you know, 30 seconds here, 10 seconds there, that I I just missed what some people were saying. Mm-hmm. And that was probably one of them, because I don't remember that at all. Mm-hmm. It was it was as he was going to get the map. It was a quick bit. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you missed that. Yeah. Um, yeah but it's it, just, like, even even the, the, the player interactions between each other with the Christmas time and everything like that, like, that's just, it's part of the whole joy of Critical Role, and, like, this is... One of the better aspects to try to get people into Critical Role are these one shots, especially like this one. Um, and I did think it was fun. Like I'm not saying mm-hmm. that I didn't. Like um, honestly, like I really enjoyed. Um, there was a bit. I think it was fairly early on. I think it was after the first combat, um, where like Matt was investigating like the 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 tracks, and like he decided to taste it, and uh, Liam's uh-huh. just like, "Oh, it tastes like shit." And like the rest of the game. Matt's just like, well, not that I go around eating shit, but, and, <laughs> like, just leaning into it real heavily. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The, the, the perfect yes end end of, of, of Critical Role. It was great. Um, but, like, and Drew, since you didn't actually see the end, so in the last, like, five minutes, <laughs> um, Travis, who's playing, like, the old man, um, just fucking takes the biggest swerve and tries to kill Santa. <laughs> yeah. Like he, so he, he gets up to Santa and then like he he's playing it like he's going to be helpful and then he just he's like saying all this stuff and he's like and then I pick up my dagger and I stab Santa Santa yeah. in the chest and just he, everyone just goes what and like loses it. It's great cuz he he monologues like he told me to build Voltron out of wood. No one liked it. He wanted me to make Game Boys, and I'm bad <laughs> with electronics. And then he says something else. I can't remember the next. So the I, last I have part. the quote. I, I so their their wiki actually has like a a ton of good stuff on it, um, uh-huh. like the fandom wiki. And yeah. so the um the two things that he said that were amazing. Um, so the monologue before he stabbed him is he told me to make Voltron out of wood. No one wanted it. He told me to make a Game Boy. I can't do circuits. He told me to make the little trolls, but the hair didn't move. <laughs> um, um, and then, so, the, the, the stabbing part, he goes, are there restraints? Are there any restraints on Santa? Liam goes, yeah, he's tied down. And then he just immediately responds, I stab him in the chest. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then the, the other, like, funny line that he said, I think after he stabbed him, was... You're a fool, Claus. We can't compete with Amazon. Yeah, yeah. We can't <laughs> compete with Amazon. And just, like, I'm, like, Travis is absolutely fucking hilarious when he's, especially when he's playing old men characters. Like, uh-huh. I feel like that is just his bread and butter. Because, like, he puts on a very good, like, old voice. 
mm-hmm. um like 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 cartoonish old um but like at one point um i think it was talison maybe might have been might have been matt said something like they were going to like try and like parkour up something and like just without missing a beat travis goes okay x games yeah 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 and then there there's one point that somebody one of the players is talking and they're talking a lot and he falls asleep and so they like wake him up right yeah uh uh yeah it's just uh it was it's yeah it's super fun uh i really love watching it like i said it's now my one of my christmas um Christmas uh, uh, traditions at this point will be to like the week of Christmas while I'm working to watch it just yeah. to like and like just having... to... go sorry go ahead no I, I was actually kind was... of agreeing with you so go ahead and finish just yeah just to like bring myself a little bit more into the holidays because especially over the past few years holidays have been rough to really get into I don't really decorate my house because I don't really have any decorations and so like I need to do stuff like this to bring me into the spirit yeah and um so apparently. Uh, Rich, I don't know if you if you watched or listened to these, but um, back in April of this year, on 420, apparently, they did a narrative telephone where Chutney was the operator or the narrator. Yeah, yeah. I did. I did um, watch all of the narrative telephones, and after I watched the episode, that came on, and I completely forgot that he did it. Because that was the first time you ever, the second time through Critical Role you ever got introduced to Abrea Iyengar was in that episode. And so I was okay. like, as as they're introing it, I was like, what? And then they show her and I'm like, oh, you know what? She le- she does the really good one afterwards. I must have completely forgot about this one. Not saying that it was bad, but like, crit- I absolutely suggest to anyone, watch their or or not even really watch just listen to their um narrative telephones it's it's so good because um basically what it is is during the pandemic a they were trying to find a way to make content but they were also just trying to find ways to like hang out together when they couldn't because we all had to isolate so they would write a story a two to three minute story in the voice of a character that they portrayed in critical role they would record them saying it, and then send it to somebody. And they would have to listen to it once, and then play telephone with it. Do the entire story for the next person. Everything they could remember. They could only listen to each one once. And so, from the beginning to end, you watch, you get to see the progression, and then, the episodes are usually about hour, hour and a half long, because you get to see the progression, and then you get to see them all together for the first time, watching the progression of it with the first and how it started and them all saying like I don't remember that I never got that that wasn't in there to the very end where it's just a shit store okay and it's just it, it's really good and funny content that was like very much needed during the pandemic yeah no I, I get that um but I, I do agree like this is that was definitely one of those things where it's a fun holiday thing mm-hmm. like as sort of like that like background noise. um cause like Andrew, I don't know if, if you would agree or not, as somebody who doesn't actually really watch Critical Role, um, it wasn't bad at all, but, like, most of it was just, like, you know, kind of, like, by the numbers, like, episode of Critical Role, um, other than, like, it being a one-shot and the characters, you know, being more Christmas-themed and, like, bringing that stuff up, um, that, like, actually focusing on it for four hours um, was actually a little a little tough, and, like, that might have just been because I was also working and had, like, a billion things going on. Mm-hmm. but like being able to go back to that like at christmas time and just kind of have it on in the background and like laugh when like sam says on blitzen and blitzen and blitzen and blitzen <laughs> and blitzen like, and blitzen yeah like like mm-hmm. having like just like catching those little bits of like oh right that was really funny um it's like right up there with like watching like you know like christmas movies like home alone or whatever because like normally like if you're watching home alone you're not really watching home alone like yeah. home alone is on and you're kind of like doing other stuff one of my other tradi- Christmas traditions, because, uh, and I might be the only one, I I hear a lot of people really don't like this movie, I fucking love it, is to watch Polar Express while wrapping gifts. I don't watch it, it's on while I'm wrapping gifts, but it's just like, it's it's one of those, like, Nightmare Before Christmas, or The Night Before Christmas is one of those things that, you, like you said, you do while you're doing other Christmas stuff, baking cookies, getting ready for Christmas Day, whatever, you have that on in the background. Yeah, I've actually I've never seen Polar Express, but the um the artwork always like irked me, so like I never wanted mm-hmm. to see it. I 
I can't remember when I first saw it, but ever since then, it's like, you know, this is a great story, and um, uh, Tom Hanks is the best. So I'm going to keep one. That's that's valid. Um, anything else anyone wants to say about The Night Before Christmas? Christmas? I don't know. Jordan, you got anything else? No. Nah. All right. So I have a, I guess, question. Mm-hmm. Um, proposition, if you will. Sure. Um, so I mentioned this on on our chat earlier. And Drew, I know you said it sounded like a good idea. And Rich, I don't think you actually know what it is. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. All right. Like, so, like, I, like with the, whatever this is that you're suggesting. Like, I, I remember reading it. I just don't know. So there is a YouTube channel called Noclip. Um, they do video game documentaries. Um, like, high quality, like, well-produced documentaries um up until the pandemic they were actually going to the studios and having like in-person sit-down interviews like with the people behind the games um they've been doing it since 2016 and they've done documentaries on like rocket league uh doom from 2016 or yeah that was Mm -hmm. 20 yeah um spelunky horizon zero dawn final fantasy 14 um warframe bethesda and fallout 76 um arcane studios like just literally a they did a a a documentary on arcane as a studio like its history and everything like that um they did a similar thing on um the witcher and um cd project red like Mm -hmm. they did like a little mini series where like most of their the way it is is most of their docs are under an hour but it's like it's usually like a series of like three to five videos um ranging anywhere from like 30 to 50 minutes Mm -hmm. and it's telling different stories about a studio or a game from like different perspectives um i think it would be cool to watch one of these but i'm interested to see if if you guys have a preference on which one we watch um so i'm gonna name a couple of them that i think it would it would be interesting to watch um, I think the Arcane Studio ones could be cool because Arcane did like um, Prey and Dishonored and even older stuff than that. Um, there is a Hades one. The Hades one is a little bit different. They were actually embedded at um, Supergiant for like a year. Like they they basically had somebody at that studio off and on for a year, recording them as they made the game like doing interviews like mid development before the game came out and then like up to it coming out and getting a really good reaction from people um there's also there the final fantasy 14 one um is really interesting um that is the only one i'm listing that i have seen before but it was like five years ago and that one was basically telling the story of how final fantasy 14 was a failure and then how they they brought it back with um a realm reborn Mm -hmm. um and then the last one would be they did a documentary on the outer worlds or like like they did a series on the outer worlds which was the obsidian um space game Mm -hmm. um that was apparently really good so arcane studios hades final fantasy 14 or the outer worlds i mean i'll throw my vote behind hades but whatever which any of them i'm sure are going to be good See, I like I'll 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 uh, I'm not gonna say no to Hades, but I'm gonna say when it comes to Hades, it's a game I'm not really that interested in or keen on after playing. It just it. won a goddamn and, Hugo Award. Okay, still doesn't mean I'm interested. <laughs> still or keen winning on awards it. in 2021. So, that's, Rich, that keep it. That's, keep in mind, this isn't about the gameplay of Hades. This is about them creating Hades. Yeah, and there's a game, just keep in mind, it's a game where I played that I didn't really care for or like. Now I'm learning about how the game that I didn't really care for or like was made. That's totally fair. Um, Which is why, like, I'm not going to say no. If you guys want to do Hades, I'll definitely watch it. But I, I for me, it, 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 I might not be, like, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to, like, I, I might not key into the, some of the things that they're talking about because it's, it's a game that, whether, like, I don't think it lived up to the hype that I got, and therefore I'm not super keen on it, or, or like, I might be a little bit more negative towards it, because... Well, which of the four games would you rather experience, then? Honestly, probably 14, and the Fall and Rise of Final Fantasy 14, uh, definitely does interest me in learning a little bit more about. 
Uh, what were the, uh, you said it was Arcane Hades 14, and what was the last one? Uh, uh, the Outer, Outer Wilds. Oh, Outer, yeah, sorry, Outer, the Outer Worlds. Outer Wilds is yeah. something different. Outer Wilds is different. Uh, Outer Worlds is a game that I never played and have been interested in it. Um, and I, I know you guys have liked it, so I might be a little bit more interested in learning about the development of that. But, like, it is also, like, you've you've talked in the past about, like, the books you've read about game creating and stuff like that, that I've just, I, I sat there and was like, this is not an interest of mine to watch and learn about people playing games. So I'm probably going to be down on it. Like I'll, 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 like I said, I'm gonna but watch it. I'm gonna you listen like, to it, and you like documentaries, though, right? Eh, some, t- I mean, I don't watch a lot of them. Like the the but, most, the closest thing to a documentary I watch regularly is Top Gear and um uh, uh what's the one on Netflix or on Amazon when they got kicked off of Top Gear? Uh, Grand Tour. Like I don't really watch. I don't really watch a lot a of documentary show. It's it's a docu series. It's a reality docu series type. Like it is a documentary. It's a new show, or it's hard to say. But like I watched um, Tiger King. It was like one of the only documentaries I've watched in a long time. And as fascinating as that was, I am now furious that there is a season two about it. Yeah. No. I mean, I can um, understand that. So the thing to keep in mind about this, it's not like them talking about coding the game or like. The books I've read about game development are about the, like, really, it's about, those were mostly about sort of, like, the troubles of game development. Um, These documentaries are very much about celebrating the games and the people that are making them and, like, the Mm -hmm. passions they have for them. So, like, in some cases, like, watching some of these and, like, hearing, like, how much the people that make them love them, it actually gives you, like, a new appreciation for the game, even... Like, even games that you like already or are interested in, you're just like, oh, wow, like, Mm -hmm. there is way more thought going into this than what you might think. Or, like, there's way more passion going into it than you may think. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'll I'll, I'll watch it. It's just, these aren't my forte of things to watch. And so, I don't know. I I might be a little bit more down on it, is all I'm saying. That's that's fair. Well, I'm going to say, let's do Final Fantasy XIV because it's a thing that's in the news right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Sure. And it's, uh, what is it? Trailer, trailer, 50. It's about an hour, hour 45, two hours. So okay. it's like, it, it's three it's videos. It's 113 minutes. Yeah, so it's right between an hour and a half to two hours. Thank you, yeah. Drew. I did not do the math. I was just kind of looking. I'm like, 50 plus this plus that. Like, yeah, that's got, that's, it's more than an hour, less than two hours. So let's like put it somewhere in the middle. Um, It's three parts and it's, it's clearly labeled part one, part two, part three. Um, And like, they are real, like, they are very well produced. Like I, I know that much already. So like at the very least, it's not like it's not like sh- like I know your complaint was like grumpy people talking about games with the giant bomb stuff, and that's not what this is at all. Like this is a professional documentary. Like mm-hmm. they, they're yeah, like they're nobody's shitting on the game. I think some people like complain about what the game was before, but it's people that like worked on the game and like are just upset at the fact that they put out a broken ass game. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess that would be two weeks from now, which would be the first. The fifth. Yeah, it's the first episode of 2022. Yep. So on January 5th, we'll talk about no clip videos, uh, Final Fantasy 14 series, which, uh, I'll post a link to the playlist. Um, the playlist does have five videos. The first two are the trailers. So you can just skip over those and go right to the, the third one, which is part one of the three parts. Mm hmm. Um, what was next on the thing? Oh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yes. Spider-Man. That's, that's, that's a movie, man. Spider-Man's a movie. It, it, it was in fact a movie. Um, so we, we kind of talked a little bit before, um, and Drew, you haven't seen it at all yet, right? Nope. I have not seen any of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Oh, I didn't realize so. that. For some reason, I thought you had seen Homecoming, but I knew, nope. I think I knew you hadn't seen Far From Home. Nope. Just haven't seen them. Oh, they're all really good. And this one... Oof. It's it's in the running for top Marvel movie of all time. Uh so on Rotten Tomatoes, it is the second highest rated Spider Man movie. Um Spider Verse is still higher, and I don't know that that would okay. ever change. Probably but, not. Um I wanna say like No Way Home has like a ninety five and Spider Verse has a ninety seven, so like it's close. Mm-hmm. And frankly, like yeah. other than unfortunately like Spider Man's three and the two amazing movies, all the other ones are actually sitting in the nineties. Mm-hmm. 
But, like, yeah, No Way Home is the second highest rated of them. And it's apparently, like, the third highest, like, domestic box office debut ever or something stupid. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put too much on that because, like, er, we've, we've been stuck indoors for so long that people just had to go out and see that. Um, it was, it's really the only big thing that was worth going to see in theaters this year. Hey, Shang-Chi was very good. Shang-Chi was very good. Um, but, and I enjoyed it. I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but I, I, if, if, if I were to, um, compare, like, rank all of the movies that came out, whether or not they were, they were worth going to see in theaters or not due to the circumstances, really the only one that was worthwhile would be Spider-Man. If you get what I'm trying to explain. Yeah, it was, it was very, very good. Like, Mm -hmm. Um, it, like even just as far as these movies go, like it had it, it had all the normal Marvel stuff. Um, you know, yeah. it was happy, it was sad, it was funny, it was exciting. Um, I mean, it was happy in more ways than one. Favreau. Spoilers. He wasn't any um, of the trailers, man. That's Jesus. it is what it is. Um, but yeah, we're not going to spoil anything this week. Um, because it did just come out this past weekend, and it is such a big movie that we figure like. We'll talk spoilers like in another week or so when it's been out a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but just kind of like like overview, like it was really good. Um, I think they actually the the villains, which all the villains, as far as I remember, were shown in trailers and and um, yeah, posters. Yeah, every I f- even yeah no every villain was 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 announced. So all the villains that you saw, I guess you could essentially call them the Sinister Six, even though they're not. Like, there, I mean, there weren't six of them, so they definitely weren't, weren't the six. Sinister there Six. A, there was only there was only five, wasn't there? Yeah. Okay. Right? Um. Yeah, there were five of them. Uh. So like, like they they were all very well portrayed. Um. And like, and I and, and redeemed in some cases. Like yes. J- um. Jamie Fox as Electro was significantly better than he was in Amazing Spider Man, and that it really comes down to like the the Amazing Spider Man movies. Like I really liked Andrew Garfield in the role. But like mm-hmm. they were just bad scripts and poorly directed. Like no, no, no matter who's acting in those movies, like they just weren't they weren't good scripts to even work with. Yeah. Um. But like Jamie Fox in this one was actually like he was he was like he was sinister. Like I was trying to think of another word to use because we just said the sinister six. But like he was definitely kind of sinister in this one. Like yeah. Like he was all about power and like that works for Electro. Yeah. And just like overall thematically with everything that happened in this movie, it just it it did it, it does everything really well. There were so many impactful moments, whether they were small or big. Like there there were two really good moments. Um, that like I I I want I I want to b- mention, but like I kind of want to wait until next week to really talk about them a little bit more. Yeah, we'll we'll wait. Um, because like the characters involved could have essentially be considered spoilery kind of sort of not really but kind of um then i'd much rather talk about it like after the movie's been out for a while uh it, it's just it was great um also the uh the post credit scenes were really good uh one of them i'll say it now one of them's already out on the internet i mean what one of them was just a trailer for doctor strange 2 yeah so but but like that was that's a really crazy looking fucking trailer yeah and like doctor um, strange in this one was really cool Finding out sort of like the change in his dynamic um, after mm-hmm. after Endgame was really cool. Um, I think his interactions with Peter were also really good because like yeah. generally like for the most part when Peter has interacted with like the older generation of like heroes, um, they're a little more like mentory. Let's call it like I can't think of a better word for it, but like Strange definitely treated him more like a peer. And, yeah. like, it didn't always work, like, because I think it was even in the trailer, and it's, like, everyone knows that, like, he goes to Doctor Strange to try and, like, do the thing, the the, the mind erase thing. Yeah. But, like, Strange even kind of, like, says at one point, like, I ca- like I kind of forgot, like, because of all the shit we went through, like, two years ago or however long it's been, that, like, you're still just a, a kid. Like, yeah, you can't be expected to make these decisions. This was my bad. Um, Like, but also, like, to just... Mm-hmm. Fucking go home, man. Like, yeah. things didn't work out. It sucks. I'm sorry. Like, you almost ripped apart the fabric of reality. So, like, please call me sir and leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
It was, it was, like, those interactions were really great. Um, one thing, uh, no, I, I'll, I'll save that for next week. Um, they also, I, I mean, like, this is kind of a given in it, but I like that they let, they actually let show that Pete is smart. Um, cause that's mm-hmm. something that I feel like these, the only, Amazing did it a little bit. Um, and so did, um, the Toby movies. Just with his interaction, like, the second one more than anything, because there was that whole, he, like, Doc Connors, like, basically, like, getting him that, like, internship with Doc Ock before Doc Ock, like, turned. Yeah. And, like, all that. And Garfield had a similar setup where it's, like, they alluded to him being smart and he made, like, the webbing and everything like that. But, like, mm-hmm. they haven't really done that with Tom Holland so much yet. And having, like, that scene where he does geometry and he's just like, oh, shit, this is geometry. I'm great at geometry. Let me just fucking figure this equation out in my head yeah, real quick. Yeah. It, 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 it shows, like, uh, that's, the Spider-Man games, the, the Insomniac Spider-Man games, really, uh, when, when they were introducing uh, Miles and how he wanted to learn how to be Spider-Man. It was like, oh, well... You need to know physics in order to swing properly. Otherwise, you're going to die. Yeah. And, like, they really show that you have to be smart to be a spider warrior. Um, and you're right. The other, the other Spider-Man movies never really gave them that opportunity. Like, I, I believe in the Garfield movies, he did intern for a while as well at Oscorp or something. And, like, uh, mostly Toby didn't really get a chance at all to be smart. Yeah, like, they but, definitely don't, like, it's very much like Batman. Like, Batman yeah. is, like, one of his monikers is the world's greatest detective. Yeah. This motherfucker doesn't detect anything and, in any of his movies. It's it's and, like, taken 20 fucking movies before he just started, decided to start being a fucking detective with, with, with Robert Pattinson. Like, yeah. And, like, the Dark Knight trilogy, like, alluded to it a little bit, like, in the last movie where, like, that Bruce was a genius... Because he's the one that rebuilt the um the the ship's OS so that it w- the autopilot worked. Yeah. But like that was such like an end of the movie like throwaway thing. It's like you're not focusing on that at that point. Yeah, and there's, like that's there's, there's never been a mystery going on in a Batman. There's been and, riddles though. Yeah, there's been <laughs> riddles, but like and 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 throwaway lines like holy rusted metal Batman. But besides that, there's just never really been a showcase of how smart. Bruce Wayne actually is, and it's just, it's the same, same with Spider Man, and like so I, I and it it's not like they leaned into it hard, but even like that like a, a very minor plot point is like he's a senior now and he's applying to colleges and he's applying to a lot of prestigious like yeah schools like MIT yeah. is one of the schools he's applying to, and it's like okay like you are like leaning into the fact that he is very smart, and like in the comics Spider Man is he is never regarded this way, but like he is on par intelligent wise as like your Tonys and your Reed Richards and stuff like that. It's just, he's Spider-Man. So he's looked at more as like, Oh, the funny guy making the jokes and, and the quips. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's every once in a while a comic book writer will like have him interact with these people in like that sciencey way. And there's usually somebody making like a smart ass remark about like, Oh, now we're letting Spider-Man figure stuff out. Hmm. Um, but, like, certain characters know he's smart. Like, Reed knows he's smart. But in these movies, like, no one knows that he's supposed to actually be, like, a genius. Yeah. Um. So I, I, I liked that part of it. I liked all of, like, I liked his interactions with all of his um cast. Like, MJ and Ned and Aunt May and Happy and, like, all those people. Like, yeah. I, I think that they have a very good, um like, core cast for these movies. They do. They really do. Um, and again, this, there was one really great interaction between him and Ned that just like blows it out the water. I, I don't want to say too much until next week about it though. Um, that I just, I loved. And, and that's, that's the one great thing about this movie is, and I've said it multiple times, like it's, it's not just the full scope of things. Like if I went into this movie knowing the ending, I would be a little bummed and having had known the ending and ha- having had it been spoiled, but a lot of the character interactions and one-on-ones and and even slight little things that you might have missed if you weren't really paying attention like some of these like no, some of these things that you see when you're just sticking to this entire movie like are just so good so good that like it it, it just it that's what kind of brings it up 
a notch and 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 puts it to in my opinion top tier one of the best MCU movies um i i'm not i can't i'm not sure if i can say it is the best um, you have to go back and watch the 30 other movies first before you can make that decision no no <laughs> the 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 one thing is um and, and like and this is this is weird to say but rewatchability like there's there's a lot of big moments in this movie that when you go back to rewatch it like you've already seen it you already know you're already expecting it they don't impact you as much the second third or fourth time whereas like say uh winter soldier there's there's not really that many of those big moments that's just an all-around great movie that has a lot of rewatchability and that's where i i might put winter soldier a little bit higher than no way home not because and then that's not to say that either of them are better than the other it's just i could rewatch winter soldier all the time and it still have the same effect whereas if i rewatch no way home all the time it might not have the same effect each time i and i can understand that um just, just real quick again to circle back on the villains um um alfred molina and um willem dafoe oh they nice. were just they were fantastic um yeah they both it like they honestly just rolled right back into those characters like it was still 2002 and 2004 um willem dafoe in particular um he is just so good at crazy. Whether mm. whether he's good crazy or evil crazy, like he just he leans into it all the way and like walks this line of it being over the top and campy and being like actually kind of like frightening. Mm. Um that just works so well and especially works well for a character like the like the Green Goblin. Um yeah. and like just his his facial stuff, like this is very minor, like a very, very minor spoiler, but him being in there like that character in all media, including 2002, had a split personality. Sometimes he was Norman Osborn. Sometimes the Goblin formula was was kind of like overpowering him, and he was the Goblin. Yeah. And it's the same thing in this movie. And his crazy as Norman and his crazy as the Goblin are different. And there are points where you can see which crazy he is, even when maybe he's pretending to be the other crazy. Yeah. Um. And like I just th- thought that was great. And Mm -hmm. I also, um, this is, so he, he apparently like during some interviews and stuff, um, like talked about like kind of his stipulations for returning. Um, he only did it if it was not a cameo and like a full role. And if he got to do as much of the action sequences as he physically could. Okay. So he, he wanted to do it himself. He didn't want to have, um, like stunt doubles and stuff. As, As much as he physically could and like was legally allowed to. Because, like, mm-hmm. some of the fights in that movie, like, he definitely would not have been able to do. Like, yeah, it, it would it would have been dangerous to dudes like 66. Like, Tom yeah. Holland wasn't allowed to do that stuff, I guarantee it. So, like, but it was still just, like, that's cool. Like, he wanted to do this, and he wanted to do it for real. He didn't want to just, like, pop up and say, hi, I'm the Green Goblin, and then walk off stage left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It so. was, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely a really good movie that you should try to go see. Try to avoid spoilers until you go see it. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. Um, is there anything else either of you guys want to uh, want to talk about before we wrap up? I I got I got one quick thing. Don't okay. really have to talk about it. I just want to say it out loud here right now. There's a post credit scene in Hawkeye. It is the best post credit scene ever. It's flat out, it's the best one on any of the Marvel ones. All right, I haven't watched it yet, so I will I I can confirm or deny that later. <laughs> honestly you'll probably deny it but still it's the best i mean you're probably right i will probably disagree with you um that's that's all i just wanted to get that out there because i, I watched that during lunch and it's a really good episode and that post credit scene is great yeah i'm I'm looking forward to, to watching that probably tomorrow mm-hmm. all right well in that case we're probably gonna get wrapped up um as we discussed like i don't know 20 minutes ago uh the next book club is going to be on january 5th the first Wednesday of January, or I'm sorry, January 6th, because this will go live on Thursday. So the first Thursday of January, and uh, we're going to be doing um, no clip videos, uh, Final Fantasy 14 documents, documentary series. Uh, but other than that, if you would like to find more of our content, you can head to www.one-quest.com. You can also uh, support us by going to patreon.com slash one quest. If you can't support us there with dollars, though, you go to your favorite podcast platform, 
Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, all the fun places. You can rate us, review us, subscribe to us. Those things all actually have a really big impact on us showing up anywhere ever. Uh, you can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline or at one underscore quest on Twitter and Instagram. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequestvideo. And there should be a video going up in the next couple of days about uh, Jurassic World, the legacy of Isla Nublar. And then uh, you can always send us an email to social at one-quest.com. Otherwise, uh, have a good holiday and such. We'll be back before the New Year, so I won't say that. Um, and yeah, we'll be back next week with something else to talk about. Bye. Happy Bye. holidays. Bye.